Mark chapter number two, and we're going to read the first five verses. I think I got that turned on. Did I hit that right? Mark chapter two and verse number one. And the Bible says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing him one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to preach. We thank you again for the opportunity to assemble, Lord. Let us never take this for granted. Uh, Lord, the opportunity we have tonight. Lord, we ask you to be with our pastor while he's away. You continue to give him uh, good preaching and good uh, meeting. Lord, just continue to help him down there, Lord. And has Brother Christian's already prayed. Lord, you just break out revival down there and fan it this way, Lord, and just see you blow through this community as well. But we ask you to help us tonight. Be with what you laid upon my heart. Just let help it be a help to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the first thing I'm going to look at is we just see in verse number one, we see the fact that it was noised. And he entered again to Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Um, it's pretty much just a simple question there. How much noise did you make about the fact you was coming to church tonight? Um, you know, with the things going on in the world and the current events that have gone on, it's amazed me how many people that I work with that don't know nothing about church, don't want anything to do with church, that will still ask you questions. Um, those that even know and understand uh, that will come and ask me, say, doesn't all this just kind of lead to the end of the world? And it gives you an opportunity to witness to them. Yeah, it does, and that's not something you should be taking lightly right now. That's something you should take serious and, and understand what's truly going on. And how much noise do we make in that aspect of those around us? We see it was noise that Jesus was coming. Um, and because of that noise, we see no room. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. I would say we have some more noise to make when we look around at the room that we have. The room, if, if excuses, I've seen this this week. If excuses came to church, the church views would be full. How many people right now at home have excuses on why they couldn't come tonight? Some may be legit, some I'm sure are home or are sick, that are going through, that, that are, are working or whatever it may be. But how many times do we just find it easy to make an excuse, because it's just convenient still, to watch on live stream? Or it's convenient just to get the CD or the tape later on, or whatever it may be. We see no room here. Therefore, we can look around and see we still have plenty of work to do, because we got plenty of room here tonight. We see no room. We see the need that this one sick of the palsy had. And it's the need that his friends thought that he had. they just seen a man that here he was, he was palsy, he was, they had palsy, he was laid up in the bed, he couldn't move, couldn't do nothing for himself. They seen he had a need, and they knew Jesus could meet it. He needed healed. And they was going to do whatever they could to be able to get there. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But not only do we see the need, we see the needs met. We know in verse number 5, we've seen it. when Je This is his greatest need. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son... Thy sins be forgiven thee. And we know, we won't read everything, but we know now some of the scribes sitting there and, and, and blaspheming against God and, and, and trying to make light of the situation. And we get down to verse number 11, and it says, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it. On this fashion, we see his need met that he says is tells him his sins are forgiven in verse number five, and then we get a few uh, verses later and we see his need met on why those four brought him there to begin with to be able to get up and walk, to be able to get up and 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 healing to be able to do those things on his on his own. Why'd they bring him there? Why'd they bring him there? Because they cared for him. By all accounts, this man uh, was sick of the palsy, laid up in bed, could do nothing for himself. Yet they cared enough to go through all this trouble to get him there. And that's why I want to preach on this with this thought in mind tonight. When you care. When you care, the first thing you will do is you'll do what these four friends do. You'll just show up. You'll just be willing to show up. It, we, we don't, you know, I, there could have been other people that cared for him. I don't know. But it was these four, Brother Ray, that made it in the Bible that showed up to take him somewhere. 
We had a conversation at work the other day. Uh, me and a, a few of us guys, we was all sitting uh, in the um, break room eating lunch, and we got to talking. We, we was talking about what you consider friends at times. And he's like, you know, he said, some of my friends are probably the ones in here, not the ones that I might have went to school with or do whatever. He said, yeah, we kind of hang out. He said, but you all are the ones that have always offered to do something. You all are the ones that have offered to show up or do something. When we care, we are willing to show up for somebody. When you care, you're willing to, you know, I know times I've gone on vacation and you come home and somebody has just showed up and mowed your yard. Those are what friends are. Those are what we do one for another when we care. We're willing to just show up. You know, no matter what that may entail when we get there, but we're just willing to show up. Sometimes we just need to show up just to show support. Sometimes, whatever that may be, a shoulder to cry on, maybe it's something physically we have to do, I don't know. But we're just willing to show support for somebody else. You know, I think that uh, uh, my uh, sister, her, um, I guess it'd be her sister-in-law is the one, if you all remember back in the summer, I mentioned had the motorcycle wreck. You know, and it's uh, amazing sometimes how you can feel like maybe you don't have any friends or you don't have that until something unfortunate, tragic happens and you see so many people show up to show support. Those that want to help raise money to help pay hospital bills and do all those things. And, and, and so far right now, she's doing good. She had another surgery today to try to reconstruct some of the nerves in her arm. But what looks so uh, 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 glim or, or gloomy at the time has turned into something wonderful. And, and somebody that has kept a great attitude throughout it. But sometimes we just have to show up for support. These four showed up and was willing to offer their support. They was willing to offer, they was willing to take this bed, all four of them, and walk and get to Jesus, get him to Jesus to see him get the needs uh, met that he had. Not only are we willing to show up, not only are we willing to show support, but we're also willing to show that nothing else matters. When you look at... Uh, what they had to go through. And they bring him one sick of the palsy when they cannot come nigh unto him for the press. In verse number four, they uncovered the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed where he in the sick of the palsy lay. How many of us would say we care? We would show up. We would offer support. Hey, if we got to if we got to carry your bed there, we'll carry your bed there. And you get to the door and you're like, we can't get in. There's nothing we can do, buddy. We tried. I'm sorry. We got you here. We tried. But when we truly care, we're not going to let anything stand in our way. Well, okay, well, let's, let's, let's formulate a plan. Well, you know what? I think if we can get up there on that roof. And, you know, I've heard different things about how uh, you read different commentaries about what the roof was made out of and how high it was and this and that. I don't care, Brother Jordan. It says they went up on the roof, took the roof off, uncovered it, and let him down. That took some effort on their part. They cared enough to go through. It doesn't matter what's going on. We're going to see to it that this man can get the help that he needs. When we care, we're willing to show nothing else matters. I was just joking with you, Miss Dom, when I came in, but I keep going. We might be done by quarter till. I really thought about what I was going to do is I was going to bring one of my, uh, I was going to get two of our old hope folders back there. I was going to put two of them together and come in and say, you know, it's been a while since I got to preach, so here's my notes for tonight. And lay that up here, it's been about that thick. That would have been good. That would have lasted like 20 minutes, you know. Not only do we show up, show support, and show nothing else matters, but we show that the noise can be shunned. What did it say? We know that it was noise that Jesus was in the area. And everybody showed up, and everybody's there, and it's all full. These fellows showed up. Now, you might have to use your imagination. I, I don't know. But imagine you, you walking into that situation with somebody right now and what was probably said about those four when they got there. You're wasting your time. You can't get in here. There, we, we need to listen to him preach. We need to do this. He's got more important things to worry about than to worry about you right now. But they still wasn't going to let that stop them. They wasn't going to let the outside noise get to them. By all accounts, this young man, or this man, had had somebody taking care of him his entire life. And they didn't care about what anybody else had to say. We're still going to take care of him because we care. We're still going to be there for him because we care. We're not going to worry about somebody else, what somebody else might say. We care. We're going to do everything we can to get him down and get him to Jesus and get his needs met. All those things, though, take the fact 
that if we are going to do that and show we care, we have to be willing to show out and supply. Too many times it's easy to walk up and tell somebody, somebody here, Brother Darrell said in his own testimony that it was a bad week for him. It's easy just to walk up to him after service and say, Brother Darrell, I'll be praying for you. Sorry. That's easy. And we go in and maybe we pray tonight, maybe we pray tomorrow, and by the next day we've done forgot. It takes true effort then to walk in on Sunday and say, how was the rest of your week, Brother Darrell? How'd the rest of the week go? Been praying for you. To send that text to really show out and show that you truly care. Not just words, not just lip service. When we show out and we're willing to supply, we have the will to see it get done. These four fellows wasn't stopping at nothing. They was not going to let anything get in their way of allowing that young man, that man, I don't know why I keep on young man, it just says man, to get the help that he needed. They was going to do everything they could. Not only do we have the will to see it get done, we will figure out a way to get it done. Sometimes it might be prayer, I don't know. But when we have the will to see it get done, the way to get it done, we're willing to just allow God to supply the work. It doesn't say those fellows lowered him down, then did everything they could. They lowered him down and allowed Jesus to speak and do the work. All that being said, show is an action word. As I already talked about, talking about Brother Darrell. It requires something on our part, more than just lip service. It requires us to do something, to show some way, one way or another, that we care. And oftentimes, the best way we can do that is to pray. And we will say, hey, I, hey, I, I prayed for service, I prayed for this, I prayed for that. And maybe we did. But in James chapter number 5 and verse number 16, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you work up, look up that word fervent, a passionate intensity. When was the last time you prayed for something with a passionate intensity? Not just lip service, not just praying because I, it, it's on my prayer list for today. I'm talking a passionate intensity. When was the last time you prayed so hard for the lives of our fellow saints? When was the last time that you knew somebody was going through something? You knew somebody was faced with something that they needed God to show up in their life and show out in a way they've never seen before. When was the last time we truly spent that passionate intensity praying for them instead of just telling them something? When was the last time we went above and beyond to truly show that we care? We're quick to give lip service. We're quick to say certain things, but to truly show and try to get hold of God on their behalf. Not only that, when was the last time we prayed and we cared about the fact whether or not the Lord shows up? This is the hard part, Brother Randy, we was talking about a little bit. I told Brother Randy a little bit about this because God was dealing with me this last two weeks. I don't know how long we've been having it. I, I, I don't remember when we started it. And, and do not take anything I say tonight, try to make you feel guilty. That's between you and God, you do whatever you got to do. But a long time ago, we started having prayer 30 minutes before service. It got real quiet. Just a small handful is usually about all we have. But we'll say we care. We want to see God show up. And we'll come running in at the last minute or we'll come running in all uh, disheveled because we've just done whatever to get here and we'll make all kinds of excuses and why we couldn't. All kinds of excuses. I wonder how many times God wanted to show up but we came in going through the motions. We were just too busy to make it out early for prayer. We were just too busy to do this. We were just too busy to do that. Well, maybe God just decided, Brother Ray, he was too busy to show up tonight. Maybe he decided that the church down the road decided they wanted a little bit more of God than what we did, so he decided to stop by there instead. Do we really care if the Lord shows up or not? Or are we just coming to church because it makes us feel better about ourselves? 
I did my due diligence tonight. I went to church. I feel better. I was where I was supposed to be. And I can go on about the rest of my week and can't wait till Sunday. We get to hear some good singing and, and, and Brother Tab and his, his family will be here. And we get to hear them girls sing and it'll be wonderful. Is that all at our concern? Because maybe God wanted to do something great here tonight. Maybe God could have showed up through the somebody else could have sang a song that God could have put on their heart if they was willing to really care about what God was going to do tonight. How much do we care of whether or not God shows up? And the last thing, I really tried to go slow. I had a bunch of notes. How much do we care about the lives of the lost? Two weeks ago, our pastor stood up here at the end of a Sunday morning service and asked everybody to bow their heads. And he said, if anybody in here is lost, raise your hand. We sat there for a minute, and he finally said, I see that hand, thank you, you can put it down. How much did we care that we never did see that person walk up here and get saved? Did any of us lose sleep? Our pastor talks all the time about him growing up, and if somebody didn't get saved in a service, you would see people at the altar begging God, God, is it me that calls them not to get saved? Did we see anybody hit the altar that day, you know, about asking God, God, please don't let them walk out of here lost. God, with what we have heard on each and every single Wednesday night for the last almost three months now, we know you're coming back soon. Don't let them walk out of here lost because they might not get another opportunity. I said the show is an action on our part. Doesn't mean we bow. Look, maybe you did, and that's wonderful. It's easy just to bow our head at, at, at our seat and say, God, save them. Somebody raise their hand. Somebody needs saved. Don't let them walk out of here lost. And we sing one more verse, and they don't come, and we immediately start making plans where we're going to eat for lunch. What happened to that passionate intensity? I'm going to the altar, and I'm going to pray. And if they walk in, if Brother Doug stops the service, and that's fine. He can stop the invitation. They can all leave, and I'm going to stay right here and make sure that I had nothing to do with them walking out of here lost. How much do we care? A few weeks ago, pastor announced we were going to have prayer on Monday nights, praying for the visitation program. Just a handful. That's all that came out. But we claim we care. We say we care. Well, I was just busy. I had this going on. I had that going on. I just couldn't make it. It was just it was such a busy, crazy day. I wonder how many of our excuses wind up in hell. Because we were just too busy. We just had too much going on. We can agree with what we have been taught and what we have heard on Wednesday night that our time is dwindling down. Day after day after day. I was sitting in, at work today and I told him at work today, I said, this right here, I said, is why. I said, with the way I believe what I believe, I said, why I'm so fed up with some of this nonsense. I said, and so many people will die and go to hell because you want to have this person that just got sworn in as president talk about he's going to pray for this and pray for that. I said, you can't believe the way he does and tell me you believe in God. You just can't. I don't understand it. You can't. I said, then he claimed that he was going to church. I said, so many people see that, and you all think that that means it's okay. It's not okay. You can't do those things. And everybody at work just got real quiet for a second. Like, amen. But they still just don't see the seriousness of it, Brother Bob. They just don't get the. no matter how much I try to convey to them, they don't get the seriousness of it. And I wonder how much is that because we don't see the seriousness of it. We just don't care the way that we should. Well, we'll pray for the lost. We'll do those things. But what I say, a effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A passionate intensity. I have seen what praying with a passionate intensity can do in our service. We've seen somebody pray before service and see God show up over that type of prayer. What could God do if we all cared that much? What could he do if we truly all cared and just said, God, I, I know the Tad family's coming in, and God, I'm looking forward to them uh, uh, hearing those girls sing and, and doing whatever, but God, I want you to show up long before that even happens on Sunday. 
I want you to show up and blow through here, and maybe that person that raised their hand is here again, and they get saved before the service even starts. How much do we care? These four fellas cared enough about this man sick with the palsy, they was going to let nothing stand in their way. How many things on a daily basis do we let stand in our way to keep us from doing what God wants us to do? The day gets too busy, we can't read. We got too much going on at work, we lose focus, and we don't pray as much as we did the day before, the week before, or whatever it may be. How much do we truly show God that we care about the lives of the saints, about God showing up on a, day, on a, uh, a daily um, basis in our lives, and on a, 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 each time that we come here for service, and how much do we show Him that we truly care about lost souls? There's so much more we could do. But do we want to? Do we care enough to do those things? Do we care enough to truly show God, God, I want to see as many people go to heaven with me as possibly can because I don't want them to face the alternative. How much do we show them we care? How much are we willing to show? Show is an action word. Those four fellas showed exactly how much they care for that man. I'm sure they've probably taken care of him and been his friend his entire life. I don't know. But they showed that time how much he meant to them. How often and how much do we show God he means to us? I've seen this meme this, this week also, and I'll be done. Showed a 93-year-old man was sick in the hospital. Uh, and it was one of those, uh, um, I don't know if it was from COVID or whatever. They was talking about they was going to put him on a ventilator and how much it was going to cost. The man starts crying, Brother Donald. And he's like, don't worry about the cost. You know, We'll cover the cost. He's like, I'm not worried about the cost. He said, you're going to charge me $5,000 a day to breathe your air. He said, I'm 93 years old. God's never charged me a day for the air I breathe. Yeah. He goes, how much do I owe him? How much do we show him we care? With how much he shows us each and every day how much he cares for us and loves us. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.